Hey, uh, Lance Neubauer here, owner of NT Painting and Drywall. Thanks for joining us. We wanted to take this opportunity today to just get you a little bit of a better opportunity to get to know one of the owners. So we've got a very specific story that we're going to tell about NT and how personal it is to me and how personal it is to the community. So I look forward to sharing that with you. What evoked you to start a business? Good question. What evoked me to start a business? You know, I was sitting there as a painter uh, thinking, just not making enough money. I'm just not getting ahead. I just feel like I'm caught in the rat race here. So I wanted to become a subcontractor. Uh, so I started taking on little jobs and I started refinishing furniture, just getting it off of Kijiji for free, um, buying it very cheap, fixing it up, selling it online, selling it on Marketplace. And then I just quit my job and I didn't really have a job and I didn't really have steady work and I was just picking up this furniture and I was just repurposing it and flipping it and selling it and taking the cash and reinvesting it and like I had I had no real plan for this thing to grow really big but once I started going I was like oh man I actually got a little bit of hustle in me here and I just really wanted to keep going with that so that's kind of how it started and then it just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. Was owning a business always in your life plan? Owning a business was not always in my life and it kind of came on suddenly. So I was a painter for many years and then I went to um, Christian uh, Bible College and I started to get a degree in pastoral theology and uh, Christian leadership and then I ended up getting a job in ministry uh, but I needed to supplement that income with something. So I supplemented the income with a self-employment kind of thing and that just grew and grew and grew. So it, it took a long time to, to kind of get there, but it wasn't really anything that I had planned. Like every year I just kind of adjusted the plan, like have a goal every year and then I adjust it. So the, the plan was to work in full-time ministry. Um, and then I did that for a number of years. Well, not full-time, but I did do it for a number of years. And then now I do it part-time and I have a business and the goal is to continue to do ministry and these sorts of things within the business. So even though the plan changes every year. Uh, it still seems like we, we have a plan that's kind of sticking together anyway. So. What obstacles have you had to overcome in the success of NT Painting and Drywall? Many. <laughs> obstacles every day. Uh, and we thank God for them because they make us stronger, but they're so difficult. And uh, I'd be lying if I said I, I was with a smile on my face through all the obstacles because I certainly wasn't. I remember when we were a very new company and we were working out of this garage and we had no reputation, we had no tools really, just basic tools, we had no money, we had no nothing. And we actually had a group of people who didn't even know how to do paint. And they didn't even know how to paint. So uh, we had unskilled people with no money and no tools and no office and no reputation in the community. And we had so many things that we had to learn along the way in training people and keeping people. Um, we would train somebody up, they would come up for a while and then they would quit or they would just have a really bad attitude and just kind of uh, mess something up for us really bad. And we just had to battle through that. That starting point of having absolutely nothing um, and building from that is just nothing but, nothing but difficulty along the way to push through that. So we had tons of obstacles like that. Uh, another one we did, we have a, the mission to help people thrive and my partner John is a, um, an immigrant from Vietnam. So we hire a lot of immigrants also. We hire people that are new to the country, we hire people um, through the resource centers that have disabilities, we hire people that, that are in bad situations in life and they don't make instant success on the job site and they don't make high profit right away or maybe ever actually some of them. Uh, and we have to really battle with not just work ethic sometimes, but sometimes also language barriers um, where there's like really difficult communication. And it would be easier to just hire somebody that speaks English well, but because we're attached to our mission, um, we want to reach out to people that need help and character develop them along the way. Even though on the spreadsheet, uh, the numbers go down when we do that, but we just believe in our mission that, you know, if we keep holding fast to what we're doing and keep grinding and keep working, we'll overcome these obstacles and, uh, and we'll create something great. And, and year over year, month over month, we've seen that. Um, and we just have to continue to have faith in that process. So. Are you happy with the 
corporate culture at the antique painting and drywall. Right. Yeah, I, I am, and it gets better all the time. You know, in order to create good culture, it has to start from the ownership. So if the owners are people who are invested in treating the people well, then that will create the culture in the company. So it's easy, it's an easy mindset for an owner or a leader or a manager to think that everyone in my company has a bad attitude and that's their fault and their problem, right? Actually it comes from the top. So if people in the, co in the company have a bad attitude, it's probably because the owner has a bad attitude. It's a reflection. Your business is a reflection of yourself and you have to see it that way. So when problems are happening um, in your company, they're not independent from the person that's leading that. The person that's leading is actually responsible for it. It would be like if you were a teacher and or sorry if you had a kid in in class in, in school and the teacher tried to um discipline the kids and teach the kids but they all failed and then at the end of the year they reviewed the teacher and said well why did all your students fail and the teacher would say well none of the students listen and you know they're not very smart and uh you know they're just not dedicated to doing their homework and this sort of thing um it pushed all the problem back on the students what we would probably say is that's not a very good teacher <laughs> We wouldn't take the responsibility away from the teacher. Uh, we would place the responsibility on the teacher to do that. Um, another example, if you have a hockey team and the hockey team's losing, who do you blame? The players or the coach? Well, the coach gets fired because it's the coach's job to motivate the players and they're a reflection of the system he implements. So in that same way, our, we take ownership of it that actually the, the people in our organization are our responsibility and we're the ones that are creating the work environment, not them. So that doesn't mean that everybody in there is perfect all the time. That doesn't mean that everybody in there is happy all the time. They're certainly not. Um, but it does mean that, that we as an ownership um, partnership, we have the responsibility of creating a culture and, and we do do that. Um, it's not perfect. We're not perfect at it, but we, uh, we do our best with it. And we believe just like, as I said previously, we improve day to day, week to week, year to year. We've come a long way in six months. So we're gonna come a long way in the next year. So it is pretty exciting in that way to get to do that. But it's difficult sometimes and it, and it doesn't always uh, feel nice to have to tell somebody, hey, you have a bad attitude around here and maybe it'd be better if you didn't work here. Maybe you should search yourself. And we've had those conversations with people many times. Because if we allow somebody with a negative attitude to stay in the culture, it corrupts it. So we just believe that uh, when we see somebody with the wrong attitude, we just try to gracefully and, and lovingly as much as possible, you know, get that person to move on to somewhere where they'll be happier. So we do that quite often. Um, so we don't have the perfect corporate culture, but we have what I believe is a good corporate culture and it's improving all the time. What skills have you learned uniquely from being the business owner of NT Painting and Drywall? Yeah, so lots of different things that I could touch on here, but um, I think one of the specific problems I had was um, when I was new to business, I tried to, it was important to me to treat everybody well. So I really tried really hard to treat, to treat my employees the way I wanted to be treated. But what can happen if you're too soft too loving and too nice and you refuse to discipline them when they need discipline, you create um, a, um, a group of babies, basically. You don't mature them. They, they take advantage of it. The reality is that they should be loved and respected um, and valued and appreciated and disciplined and told seriously when they're in the wrong. Like, like you need to be a lion and a lamb with them. You can't just be a lamb and be their friend and you can't just be a lion. The responsibility of, of me is to speak in seriously and negatively when that time is right and to speak in lovingly and encouraging when that time is right. And that's hard to do. That's very hard to do. Um, when I was at the beginning, I tried being so nice that I was too passive with people, tried to give them too much, tried to let them get away with too much, and they all took advantage of it. Um, and they didn't appreciate anything that I did for them, and I didn't do them a service by doing that. I actually did them a great disservice. So I had to understand that, hey, you know what? Sometimes I've got to give somebody heck, and I've got to tell them what's up. 
and it's not going to be a comfortable conversation and I can't back down from that. And that person may leave hating me. That's potentially possible, but it is what it is. Like I have to act right and I have to do what, what is the right thing. And for me, that was difficult because I wanted people to like me. Um, but in business, you have to really tread that line and, and accept the fact that there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to like you. Um, and you can't let that be your highest level motivator for what you do. You have to let your highest level motivation be you doing the right thing and doing it the right way. And some people will like you and some people won't. And, and people are just, uh, people are up and down. <laughs> so you can't rely on them for, for that. So yeah, that's something I learned in business big time. What has been your greatest accomplishment at NT Painting and Drywall? Yeah, so there's been some definite accomplishments. Uh, I don't know if I can condense it into one accomplishment, but, but the, the big thing that is so satisfying is when we start off and have nothing, and then we put an office in my garage and we grow. And then we have that for a year, and then we get an office in somebody else's building, and then uh, we rent space on a different part of town to put our tools that we grew. And then from there, then we buy a company vehicle. And then from there we get our own building. And then we have our own building and we set up tables and staff. And then from there we build the staffing team. And then we do things like this now that we have social media and we have like platforms and we have all these different things. And watching that grow is the most satisfying part. So as long as the business is, is healthy enough that it's succeeding financially and then the, the little pieces of it are always in development and growing, that is the biggest accomplishment. Uh, it really is a cliche, but it's the journey that is the most fun and satisfying part of it. And uh, every step that we've made where we've made that success has been very satisfying. Um, but we can't rest on it. We have to go to the next step, the next step, the next step. So it's been a pretty incredible journey. I feel like we're just now at the part where we're breaking through to become something quite big. But um, yeah, it's been really great. What has been your favorite memory at NT Painting and Drywall? Yeah, so the favorite memories I think have been the times where we've done the, the group get togethers, where we've had Easter parties, where we've had Christmas parties, where we've had shop parties. Those have been the best thing. And, and then we have a future too where we're going to be having more of those with the community and with nonprofits and these different kinds of things. Um, but those really are the best memories that, that get had. Um, the work we do for people is fantastic. But, but to actually have the events and engage the community and work with the nonprofits and, and hold events for the neighborhood, and those are some of the best memories that we can have. So those, I would say that. How has NT Painting affected your life? Kind of took over. <laughs> I tell Brittany, my wife, about it all the time that we're gonna have, you know, NT painting, NT drywall, NT uh, deliveries, NT renovations, NT, you know, everything. So, and, and that is how it's going. It's just growing and growing and growing, and uh, the brand is kind of taking over everything. So, um, it's been really great. Uh, it's it's impacted us well. We both have a job we love. We both have uh, flexible schedules, which was so important for me. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been really great and uh, just continuing to watch it grow in the, in the future is something that we're just really looking forward to. So thanks so much for getting to know me a little bit better, for clicking on the video and, and seeing what's going on in NT Painting and Decoration and hearing a little bit of my story. So this is going to be something we're going to do quite often. So you're going to have many opportunities to hear questions and answers from me. So I appreciate every single person that sat through this video and resisted the temptation to scroll away. Thank you very much. Uh, from NT Painting.